So, Travis, do you think your mom is like my mom? Is this a joke or something? No, I just heard someone say that all moms think the same way. So I wondered if you thought the same way about our moms. Joel, my mom is your mom. Oh, yeah. Awkward. Are you done being weird so we can listen to the radio? I, I, I guess. Hey, is anyone sitting here? No, go ahead. Thanks. Is that your movie pitch? Is what my movie pitch? That clipboard you're holding. Is that the idea for a movie you're going to show the company? It looks so official. I wish I had thought of that. No, this is the sign-in sheet. This is my pitch. Whoa! A whole briefcase full of pages? Oh yes, that's what the script writing committee is expecting from every writer these days. Exhaustive detail, wandering plot points, unnecessary fluff, and avert preachiness. Really? You only have one sheet of paper. Oh, this? This isn't my pitch. This is my cheat sheet for my pitch. Cheat sheet? I use it to organize my pitch. My pitch is in these file cabinets. Those are yours? Absolutely. I have lots of ideas. That way, if the studio doesn't like one, then they will like another. It's a no-lose strategy. But what if they don't want to bother with reading all those script ideas? Are you saying that my ideas aren't worth reading? Yeah, is that what you're saying? No, I just thought that when you pitch an idea for a movie, you need to make it short and simple so the company doesn't get confused or bored. Oh, so now my writing is confusing, huh? I think she called it boring. I... didn't... I don't think I did anyway. Look, no offense, but I don't think you know the business like we do, kid. Right. We know what the company wants, and it's not your three pages worth of ideas. Yeah, why don't you go home and actually work hard in a script for a change? Sage? How pitiful. Sage, did you hear me? I don't think she can hear us. Sage, are you alright? Huh? What? Sorry, I was just... What was the question? Pete and I were just wondering if you've got your Mother's Day message ready. Yeah, then you went into some sort of flashback or something? Oh, yeah, I don't think it's quite ready. I've got to add some more to it, I think. Maybe start it over. Do you mind if we listen to the radio while you do that? Sure, whatever. How much longer is it going to take to set up, Mr. Jacobs? <laughs> Just a little bit longer, Chelsea. It took me a while to find everything I needed, and now it's going to take a little bit of time to set it all up again. Usually you have it all set up already. Why'd you take it all down? We had that show a couple of weeks ago at the community center. Remember, Peter? The Passover one? Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Sorry, Mr. Jacobs. Carry on. Oh, thanks. So, Sage, how's your Mother's Day message coming? It's coming along. I've just got to write it down. Write it down? I thought you had a paper already when you came in here. It wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough? What do you mean? It just wasn't. I mean, think about it. My mom has fed me, taught me, kept me safe, and she means so much to me. In my mind, she deserves the very best. So just tell her that. It's not that complicated. Moms will like anything you say. They kind of have to. It's in the Bible or something? I'm pretty sure that's not in the Bible, Peter. Okay. But still, it's what they do. I know my mom will like whatever I decide to tell her, but I want to make it the best message I can. She's always making me feel special, and I want to do that for her. I get that. Me too. Yeah, so I'm still working on it. We'll let you write in peace then. Does that mean we can't listen to the radio? No, it's all right. Go ahead. That should do, I think. Who wants to record their Mother's Day message first? I can. I've got it right here. Okay, Chelsea, let me adjust the microphone for you and whenever you're ready. Okay, here goes. What I love about my mom is that she supports me in all of my activities, from play practice to basketball to leading church events at our church. My mom is completely dedicated and encouraging to me, as well as all of the other kids she is involved with helping. Although sometimes it's hard to see, my mom is always there for me whenever I need help. This Mother's Day, I'm appreciating the moms that are so humbly committed no matter what. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Chelsea. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, that was really good. See, Sage, there's nothing to it. Yeah, yeah. Am I missing something here? Sage is having a hard time writing her message for her mom. She's worried that her mom won't like it. I'm sure that's not going to happen. That's what I told her. Moms are all the same. They always like what we make them. 
They do have similarities in some respects, I suppose. But I wouldn't go so far as to say that all moms are the same, Peter. Really? They're people, aren't they? Each person, whether they're a mom, a dad, single, married, young or old, all are unique, created and loved by God. And your moms all have different likes and dislikes, and each have different ways that they share their love and ways that they feel loved in return. I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. It makes sense, though. You were talking about how your mom takes you to practice and helps teach other kids. My mom doesn't really do those things. I mean, I'm sure she would if I was in plays and basketball. But yeah, I've got to think about that. It's a good thing to consider. Moms can be the best friends we can have, and as their children, God gives us the opportunity to get to know them in a very special way that other people don't get to see. Moms can be our friends? You didn't know that? I mean, I guess I hadn't seen it that way. Huh, I might have to make some fixes to my Mother's Day message now. All right, let me know when you're ready. In the meantime, I'm going to listen to the radio. All right. I think I'm ready to record my Mother's Day message. All right, Peter. Let me set this up for you. And looks like we're ready. Hey, Mom. It's Peter. I just wanted to take this time near Mother's Day to say thank you. I know I couldn't choose my mom, but if I had a choice, I would have picked you. Thanks for always being there for me, between making me food, teaching me stuff, and just being there for me, because I know I can be pretty challenging. You're pretty awesome, and my favorite moments with you are when you get laughing so hard that you start to cry. Thanks for being my mom. Hope you have a great Mother's Day. That's a really good one. Thanks, Chelsea. We were talking about how God made our moms specially for each of us and that we can be their friends. So I put a little bit of that in there. It came out really well. Are you ready with yours, Sage? Um, not quite. Talking with you about it really helped, but I couldn't help wondering what the Bible says about moms. Okay. There are many famous mothers in the Bible. Sarah, Rebecca, Hannah. Don't forget Mary. <laughs> I wouldn't forget her. Right, but what I was thinking was more along the lines of, what does God say about moms? Hmm, that's still a pretty big topic. Of course, God tells about how we need to respect and listen to our mothers in verses like Deuteronomy 5.16, Proverbs 6.20, and Leviticus 19.3. Right, but that's talking about how we should treat them. Yeah, the Bible usually talks more about fathers more than it does mothers, so we have to look a little harder. Does that mean that God doesn't think moms are as important? Oh, no. God thinks moms are just as important as dads. In the very first chapter of the Bible, God makes it clear that he created both men and women to represent him on earth, giving them the ability to rule and teach each in their own ways that reflect how God rules and teaches us. So moms are made to be like God? I thought that was more of a guy thing. Why would living like God be just a guy thing, Peter? I don't know, Sage. I just thought, you know, God the Father? It's true that God does call himself that. But at the same time, he's compared himself to mothers as well. Really? Sure. Verses like Isaiah 66, 13, Luke 13, 34, and Hosea 13, 8 all compare how God, like a mother, comforts, shelters, and protects his children. Huh. I didn't know that. I think I did. But still, it's good to know that us girls can use God as an example of how to live, too. I think I know what I want to say about my mom and my message now. Great. Here's a pen. Thanks. This might take a minute. You guys can listen to the radio while I get this written down. Good idea. All right, I think I'm finally ready. Great. What does it say? You'll find out when I record it, Pete. It's a message to my mom. Right. <laughs> ready when you are. My mother is kind and compassionate. She is always looking for ways to encourage people. She is very giving and loves to get people things that make them smile. My mom is selfless. She gives up time to make us kids feel loved. One thing I love about my mom is how special she makes each of her kids feel. On our birthdays, she makes us our favorite meal for dinner and tells us what she loves about us. It is this other-centered life that has inspired me to live like her and to love people with everything that I am. I love you, Mom. Thanks. Sage. And you were worried your mom wouldn't like that? Well, this wasn't my first draft. You guys still helped me with a lot of it. Still, if your first one was anything like that, I don't see how you could think it wasn't good enough. Yeah, what Chelsea said. But I have a question for you, Mr. Jacobs. You know, I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> What's up, Peter? 
We've been talking a lot about our moms and how they're awesome, but I know some of my friends don't have that. You mean their mom died or something? Oh yeah, I had a cousin who had that happen to him. It was really sad. Mother's Day is really hard for him now. I'm sure. It was definitely hard for me when my mother passed away. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, sorry. It's alright. What I meant was some of my friends have moms that aren't... good. Aren't good? How could a mom not be a good person? Isn't that kind of part of the job? Ideally, yes, Sage. But when it comes to making wrong choices, being a mom doesn't make it easier to do what is right. Romans 3.10 reminds us that all humans do wrong things, and when you're a parent, that doesn't just go away. I guess I knew that, but it's still kind of weird hearing it, especially after talking about how great our moms are. Yeah, so, my question was what should my friends do about their moms that aren't great people? That is a good question, and the Bible gives us some tips. In passages like Luke 6 and Matthew 5, God tells us to show love and to pray for those who hurt us, being patient, forgiving, and humble toward them like it says in 1 Corinthians 13. So even if our moms mess up, we should still respect and love them. Right. So speaking of our moms, you'll send us those Mother's Day messages before tomorrow, right, Mr. Jacobs? Oh, absolutely. In fact, if you give me your family email, I'll get them done right now. Okay. I think you already have mine. I'll see you later, Mr. Jacobs. Yep. Bye, Chelsea. Would you mind turning off the radio on the way out? No problem.